Hello and welcome to The Print. I'm Sonia and today uh, at The Print we are joined uh, by Dr. Bakul Dholakya, a notable Indian economist and a management education stalwart. Uh, Professor Dholakya or Dr. Dholakya has also uh, served as the IM Ahmedabad director between 2002 and 2007. He was also awarded the Padma Shri in 2007 after his end of uh, term as the director of IIM Ahmedabad. And he was also conferred with the Lal Bahadur Shastri National Award in 2022 for his outstanding contribution in the field of management. Welcome to the print. Thank you for joining us, sir. Uh, so, sir, um, concerning uh, the recent, um, you know, steps that have been taken regarding the IIM Act, the uh, act which came into effect in 2018, and the bill which was passed in 2017. I just wanted to, you know, dive right into our questions and our conversation and, you know, talk about a little bit about your term and to give some context to our viewers. Uh, during your term as the director of IIM Ahmedabad in uh, 2002 and 2007, you advocated for greater autonomy on the campus, both in an operational and financial fashion. And you even locked horns with the then education minister Ministers Murli Manohar Joshi and Arjun Singh, uh, you know, to keep the philosophy and the spirit of IIMs alive, to keep them autonomous. Uh, you know, with the current amendment, which could come into uh, effect, uh, do you think everything that you stood for, everything you fought for, might come undone? Uh, no, I don't think so. Uh, the amendments are... Uh, quite debatable, quite uh, serious in nature. But let us put it in context. <clears throat> Before 2017, when the act was passed by the parliament, the act became operational later. But till that time, whatever is being proposed in the new act was already happening. Before 2017. I mean, the search come selection committee for director had representatives of the Ministry of HRD. In fact, without the approval of the Ministry of HRD, the committee was not uh, constituted. And the board didn't have much power to appoint the director. Only the chairman was an ex officio uh, member of the committee and so on. So the current amendments put the situation somewhere in between what was happening in the pre-2017 scenario and what was happening between 2017 to 2023. So this is a halfway house between the two. Now, uh, in my view, the autonomy of the institution is empowering the board and empowering, when the board in turn empowering the director. All executive powers raised in the office of director, that feature remains the same. Now, the operational autonomy in terms of what programs the institute can introduce, to what fees it can charge, what kind of faculty recruitment it can make, what kind of curriculum it can have, all those aspects are not covered in the amendments. So, those things remain the same. What has changed is, the power to appoint chairman and the power to appoint director. Now, let us understand that up to 2017, the IIMs, the directors were appointed in, in this fashion. Only thing is that instead of visitor, it was the PMO, you know, the appointment committee of cabinet, which was processing all this. So, if the leader is chosen correctly. Now, if the apprehension is that with this power, the appointment of chairman as well as the director would have acquired a political angle. If that is the apprehension, hmm. that the visitor gets it. But that was there before 2017 anyway. In fact, surprisingly, most appointments before 2017 did not really have any political color. Although all the powers vested with the government at that particular point of time. So this apprehension is probably overplayed. The crux of the matter is whether the board did 
correct thing in appointing directors between 2023 i mean between 2017 and 2023 when he had all the powers now there are examples where the board has not really done it properly i mean there are question marks which were being raised hmm. now uh, <clears throat> there are instances even in the earlier regime when the government appointed uh, the directors of the government having to remove the director I don't want to get into specifics, but if you do the research, you will find that there was an I, which was created after 2008, where the director was appointed by the government only, and the director had to be removed for whatever reasons. Hmm. Now, the whole point is that whether it is visitor nominating a person on the search committee or visitor approving it. or whether the board doing it it is the criterion of merit and complete neutrality in the selection process that matters it is a job of the search com selection committee to identify the best leadership material to head the institution and then give the autonomy right no. you make a wrong choice in terms of a chairman or a director then the autonomy does not serve the purpose in fact it can do the opposite instead of lifting up the institute it can damage the institute but let us let us understand the mistakes can be made by the board the mistakes can be made by the government so now do you think i'm going to interrupt you do you think that this this kind of government intervention now is the solution given that iams have had a taste of autonomy where the boards were empowered the directors were empowered had you know a complete power over the functioning of the institute taking decisions regarding uh, it, it is all about how the board uses that power like for instance let me let me give you an example that if there is a grievance that the faculty have against let us say the director then what is the process available now with the board governed thing the process would be that the faculty members would write to the chairman of the board now like it happens in the corporate structure if the director who is the ceo always enjoys the confidence of the board regardless of anything hmm. then the neutrality of perspective disappears you understand now in the case of uh, various institutes there have been instances where the faculty members have made representations against some decisions of the director not the director as a person but the decisions of the director hmm. and those decisions have been controversial it is there in the public domain hmm. i mean you know they uh, now the whole point is that in in the case of i am ahmedabad several controversies erupted so would whether you call the case of raising the doms made by logo whether, whether it is change of logo hmm, yeah. why, why why should one change logo or why should one raise down the dormitories or make what is a with what is considered as a heritage center to kind of demolish those uh, architectural monuments and so on and so forth so now the issue is that excellence stems from governance and governance requires autonomy now iims and particularly i am ahmedabad has been a faculty governed institute now the principles of faculty governance have to be respected not just by the leader the director but also by the board now the board enjoys all the autonomy board puts blind faith in the director and the director does not take into account the views and opinions of faculty then the very fundamental basis of requiring autonomy goes out of the window hmm. and that is where the problem arises so that is why i keep saying you make a wrong choice for leader no solution works whether autonomy or no whether it is government controlled or board controlled or it doesn't it is not ultimately the choice is in terms of the leadership 
now the board being given all the power to appoint a director should lead to a proper appointment of a director now there are so many new iims which have been created and in many cases there are serious problems with the leader i mean i'm i will i'm not going to name but there are several iims where the leaders appointed have they led to all sorts of questioning by the stakeholders so i think the autonomy will deliver results in terms of institutional excellence if you make the proper choice of a leader now visitor having a role in it might remove the bias of a board like in the previous instance the, the director cannot become chairman's nominee let me be very candid if the entire power is given to the board and therefore the power gets wasted in the office of chairman so whoever chairman wants becomes a director that is how i think uh, the the practice works because other members of the board who are members of the search comes election committee may not have the courage to ask questions to the chairman as to why you are doing this hmm. and then the choices could be wrong hmm. you, you 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 understand right now visitor having a nominee and hopefully that visitor's nominee would be an independent person a professional of repute then the idea is that that person can question the chairman so that personal bias is entering into the selection of director hopefully would vanish hmm. now you can argue that the personal biases of ministry might get introduced hmm. therefore the fear that politicization of the office of director might happen hmm. but the pre 2017 experience shows that it has not happened for 40 years i mean the government is also not the same anymore yeah but therefore there were directors appointed by the previous regime UG, upa there hmm. were directors appointed by the nda and by and large there are no serious uh, concerns that the directors appointments have become political right so you're saying that concern is not something so that concern i think is is uh, there is too much emphasis which is placed on it hmm. history does not support that inhibition the crux of the matter is the government should keep away from the business of running business schools Yeah. government should keep away so i hope that these amendments will not be used for backdoor control of iims so uh, sir you know iims have enjoyed the kind of autonomy that most educational institutions higher education institutions in the country that did not have i mean the kind of freedom and the kind of um, you know uh, Uh, democratic process the ability to exercise democracy within the functioning of the institution i don't think any other uh, uh, higher education institution in the country has enjoyed that kind of power so the government in 2017 gave that power it gave that autonomy and then within a few years it took that back in with this amendment so where do you think iims went wrong for Uh, so i think they enjoyed this autonomy but what is the use that they have made of this autonomy did they function did, did they focus on the long term vision of the institute if you look at the performance of iims per se in this 6 years when they enjoyed total autonomy then i think by and large from a global perspective the performance of iims has actually declined so the autonomy has not produced excellence right now whether you count it in terms of research output hmm. whether you count it in terms of global rankings whether you count it in terms of the stature and prestige that the institutes are enjoying in the marketplace you know in the eyes of the corporates in the in the eyes of the students and the 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 potential or even in the eyes of people who want to join these institutes as faculty so 
So, sir, I you think that in the last six years, the, the impression of I am grads. Uh, one thing I can do, one, one thing, right, the one thing I can say with confidence that the position of IIMs has not improved on any of these parameters. Okay, it is where it was. To what extent it has deteriorated is for the data to to see. Hmm. And uh, one particular thing. Uh, in which it has visibly declined is global rankings. Hmm. That is something which is there for everybody to see. That what was the position of IIMs before 2017 when this autonomy was given and after 2017 as of now. So, um, I mean, I can give you the example of IIM Ahmedabad. Hmm. IIM Ahmedabad, the, the, the when IIM Ahmedabad participated in the global rankings through its one-year program, postgraduate program in uh, management, PGPX, which I had introduced way back in 2005. Now, we required three years, three batches to graduate before we can participate. Mm -hmm. You cannot participate uh, without three batches being graduated. Mm -hmm. So the earliest we could have participated was 2009. And around 2009-10, when we first participated in the rankings, the FT, global rankings, which involves all the business schools of the world, the IIM Ahmedabad rank was 11. So we were in the top 11. We missed top 10 by just narrow margin. Now the FT global rankings for 2023 were released a few months back. And the rank of IIM Ahmedabad is 51. Last year in 22, the rank was 62. So it so it went sharply down to 62 and then improved it to 51. Now, but it is still not in the list of top 50. Economist, which ranks the two-year programs. Hmm. IIM Ahmedabad was in top 50 in my tenure. The economist rankings which have been released early 23, the IIM Ahmedabad rank in 99. So what I'm trying to tell you is that IIM Ahmedabad's rank in global rankings has gone down sharply. This year it has improved in relation to previous year, but previous year was a disaster anyway. So that I am Ahmedabad in terms of its PGPX ranking does not figure in the top 50. Should be a matter of concern. I would like to know whether the board really debated and discussed the declining rankings of I am global rankings uh, at all. Now, if they did not, then what's the use of autonomy? I mean, what is it that you are doing with an autonomy? You should focus, you should not focus on on demolition of DOMS or change of logo, you should focus on performance. So what mechanisms have been done? Like for instance, is there a mechanism done for director's performance review? The board has autonomy. The board can institute. Now I understand that board has introduced the practice of giving a performance bonus to directors. Hmm. But what are the criteria of performance evaluation? God only knows. Okay. Now, the financial autonomy is utilized to give a performance bonus to directors, outgoing directors. Then why not give performance bonus to faculty for the kind of performance that they have? So I'm just raising this, uh, the, this question. Hmm. So what is it that the board is concerned about? That is what decides. Now, visitor having a nominee on the board or visitor having a nominee on the selection committee is not going to change these things. Hmm. These things will change when you appoint chairman and directors who have the institution as the primary focus. Right. And I think that this is a serious, like faculty is debating as to why our performance is declining. Hmm. So, but it is it is the decision makers who should, uh, right. who should and the director should be accountable for the performance. I think the most important part of autonomy is accountability. You give autonomy, 
and you hold the person responsible. Autonomy and accountability are two sides of the same coin. Right. Autonomy without accountability results in reckless behavior. My worry is that because of a lot of complaints which went to ministry, ministry has taken this decision of visitor being appointed and visitors nominee and all that. Hmm. Now, tomorrow, more complaints about the functioning of the board go to the government. More amendments will come that will actually erode the autonomy of the institutions. That's my worry. Right. So if they don't uh, kind of get the whole thing sorted right now, if yeah. uh, accountability is not brought in and uh, steps are not taken to improve the condition, the government might bring in more intervention. Yeah. Like, for instance, if, if the institute's rankings have declined, mm. one of the tasks of the new director is to take measures which will improve it. If the research output is not up to the mark, then you so you must have a five-year plan because it's a five-year term. And that the progress of that should be monitored. That should be an action taken report. I mean, we have all the good governance practices of corporates. And the corporate leaders, the corporate honkos are leading the boards. So the best governance practices when it comes to accountability can be brought in. I mean, it's not a, it, 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 it's not a big deal. But unless this is done, now what proportion of the courses you are offering today are new courses which you have developed in the last two years? Now, this is the parameter on which reporting should be done. Everybody should know. Now, if curriculum doesn't change, you will not remain contextual because the world is changing very, very fast. And in this, like the business scenarios today, the business practices today are way different from what they were 20 years ago. Sir, uh, you know, uh, you were talking about uh, funding and the kind of uh, wealth that IMs have been able to generate so far, especially the first and the second generation IMs. Uh, so, this also brings to my mind that the fees um, for management courses now in the country is exorbitantly high. They go upwards anywhere of, say, 30 lakhs. Um, and, you know, in 2007, after, you know, you uh, stepped down as the director, you had mentioned that I am Ahmedabad was on the path of becoming financially self-reliant. And it was almost there. Uh, and it no longer required government funding. So when IAMs do not require government funding in any fashion like you said they're rolling in riches do you think this proposed dilution is something that will be well received amongst iams given that they have the financial means to support themselves the dilution, by dilution you mean these uh, recent changes the recent amendments ha, but the recent amendments do not touch the financials yes they don't they don't the the, the issue is that the Autonomy to fix the fees is still with the institutes. Hmm. The autonomy to fix the fees is still with the institutes. IITs don't enjoy that autonomy. Yeah. IITs require all sorts of uh, layers. Hmm. But IIMs, the board decides. Right. That has been the case. Hmm. So now the whole point is that there has to be some relationship with the cost of providing education and the fees that you charge. I mean, on the cost, you charge a premium because you require development, you require resources for other things and so on and so forth. But no relationship between these two. I doubt whether the 30 lakhs is for a two-year program. So per year, it is 15 lakhs. Now, I don't think that the cost of providing education to an MBA student in IIM would be 15 lakhs per student. Now, I don't think that it should be 15 lakhs, but it should be at least 10 lakhs. Now, who has done the cost audit? And has, has, the, has the board looked at the cost audit before it approves the hike in fees? Has it been done? Now, I don't know. I'm not aware. In my time, it was done. 
So I'm aware about 2002 to 2007. Hmm. I'm not aware about what is happening now. But so as a result, you know, the, 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 there is a fear that the IIMs might become portfolio management companies hmm. with a huge amount of treasury surpluses. I mean, you know, 500 crores and 1,000 crores and like those kinds of uh, resources you are managing in terms of uh, investments and so on and so forth. Then you, you have all the resources in the world. Now, that's, it's good to have resources. That, that, that's not a problem. The point is, what is it that you're doing with the deployment of those resources, allocation of resources? So you just mentioned brand uh, management and, you know, building a brand and how you build a brand for I am Ahmedabad. Now, of course, I am Ahmedabad, Bangalore and Calcutta, legacy IAMs, they've, uh, you know, kind of, surpassed all the other management institutions in the country to become the best however how now that you're you know uh, from somebody who's been a part of uh, the system for almost 40 over 40 years now how would you you know uh, uh, summarize or rank in your opinion the second and the third generation ims which have come up and this is in terms of their placements infrastructure the courses that they offer do you think are they uh, coming up with more relevant courses like you mentioned that I think some of the second some of the second generation ims have done well like uh, for instance i am udaipur has done well um, similarly uh, some of the later IIMs, like I am Indore, hmm. has made a lot of progress. So, but wherever these things have happened, it can be attributed to the leadership qualities of the people occupying the position of directors in those institutions right. at the respective points of time. Hmm. So, I think the job is to select a good leader and give him all the space. Don't interfere in the functioning of, uh, of, of that person. But hold the person accountable. Like faculty recruitment. So what is the quality of faculty that you have recruited? How many you could attract? Right? I mean, what is it that you are doing in order to promote research? What is it that you are doing in order to promote uh, the business linkages so that your placements are better? What is it that you are doing to establish international linkages so that how many institutions you are collaborating with for student exchange programs, for research collaborations and so on and so forth. So these things, so set performance parameters and monitor them. But choose a good leader. And secondly, appointing anybody as a director of an institute who does not have prior administrative experience, a good academic can be a good administrator, hmm. but all good academics are not good administrators. And all good administrators are not good academics. The challenge is to find a combination okay. of a good academic who is a good administrator. Now, and I think that is where uh, sometimes uh, we, we make mistakes. And those mistakes have turned out to be very costly. And that is why some new IIMs have never taken off. So for instance? Oh, out of 20, you can you can, you can can figure out. Even if you take NIIF rankings, hmm. there are a lot of private institutions which are way ahead of uh, the newer IIMs. Newer IIMs. Yes. Now, is that a part of their vision that we want to be in the top 10? Now, with 20 IIMs, the top 20 positions should be occupied at least 90% of them should be IIMs, no? But that is not that that is not going to happen, and that will not happen for quite some time to come because there are formidable competitors in the private sector. And so the uh, new IIMs have to pull themselves up. My larger worry is if the performance of the IIM system continues to decline then these amendments may not be the solitary ones. It may be the beginning. Mm -hmm. And more amendments may come if more complaints go to the government. 
about non performance of the iis that is where i think the boards have a much greater responsibility to ensure that this doesn't happen thus far and no further now thus far and no further can be ensured by the boards i don't think that the government is control oriented it's a wrong assumption to me let's give them a benefit of doubt but if there are good reasons why the boards are not able to turn around the performance of uh, iim systems then think can happen the other problem is that you have 21 of them now all 21 will not be on this on on par now act is uniform for all 21 mm. now in order to fix the problem of 10 low performing iims you cannot damage the performance of the top 10 now how will the government strike this balance one measure is that in the case of these top 10 iims the visitors nominee is for all practical purposes based on recommendation by the chairman but in the case of the other 10 uh, non so performing iims the the government uh, actually monitors the performance or something like that and that may be desirable because the board has failed to do it hmm. so treating all 21 iims on par will drag the performance of the top ranking institutes but at the moment there is no fear of that kind because the autonomy remains with the boards of their respective i am only looking into the future that there may be more rules and regulations which may be formed hmm. and that may do much more serious damage to these brands then the amendments that are being proposed they to me they look innocuous they look noble i don't think that we should read too much into this right but the era of amendments has started <laughs> and we should worry about that right this is sonia agrawal thank you so much for joining us sir thank you thank you nice I talking to you likewise sir keep watching us uh, on our youtube channel for the print and this is sonia agrawal signing off